Hello and welcome to Aerodynamics of Hypercars. In this mini-series I'm going to be taking you through the aerodynamics of some cars that you really probably like, like the Koenigsegg 1 to 1, Ferrari LaFerrari, Porsche 908, McLaren P1 and of course the Pagani Huayra. And I'm going to break down the aerodynamics and tell you what I think works and what is not working so much. So today's episode is on active aerodynamics. As far as active aerodynamics go, it's really kind of my thing. I actually did my entire undergraduate engineering thesis on active aerodynamics of race cars. So I know quite a bit about this. And the thing is that one can ask the question of why do we need active aerodynamics? If we consider a car going around a circuit, it can usually be considered in one of three conditions. Either straight line, acceleration, cornering, or straight line braking. And the thing is, is that your aerodynamic demands for these three fields are completely different. In acceleration, you want to have minimal drag so that the engine can pull as hard as possible. However, if it's low speed, you also need good downforce so you have maximum traction. If we're in a corner, we don't really care too much about drag. We just want as much downforce as physically possible. And then when it comes to braking, we actually want a huge amount of downforce. And that's why you see things like air brakes. But with air brakes, things like a Bugatti Veyron spoiler, which pops up and stalls, is not the most efficient way of getting an air brake. And the thing is, is that the air brake on a car should still provide downforce because you can extract, generally speaking, more grip out of the tires than you can from force from the air. The other benefit of active aerodynamics is that you can lower your downforce whenever you need it. And this is handy because as the speed increases, the downforce increases and it increases at a rapid rate. A formula for lift is lift equals a half rho density of the air V squared, so velocity squared, S area CL. That's constant for the coefficient of lift. And the thing is, is that as this goes up, you get a lot more downforce. So it means that you've got to make your car heavier to take all those additional loads. But if you can reduce the downforce as the speed increases, you can end up with a lighter car, which means you're not sacrificing mechanical grip in low speed corners either. And this is where active aerodynamics kind of gets back the weight of the systems themselves in that your car overall doesn't have to be quite as sturdy. To start off with, I'd just like to dispel any accusations of bias people may think I have against these cars. And I'd like to say that I love them all. If I had my pick of the current three hybrid hypercars, I'd probably take a McLaren P1 with a LaFerrari driving position and engine and a Porsche 918 interior. I have a Koenigsegg as my background at work and ever since the Zonda first came out, I've always wanted a Pagani. With that said, I don't want everyone to assume that the way that supercar manufacturers do aerodynamics, and in fact a lot of other things, isn't necessarily the correct and right way. They have a lot of limitations in terms of pedestrian crash rigs, aesthetics, a whole bunch of things. And so you can't just assume that because a supercar manufacturer does it, that it's the way to go. And that's really what this series is all about. With that dealt with, let's address the structure of this series. This is going to be the top video. This is going to give the brief overview of the cars, what I think of them, and then it's going to have a bunch of sub videos, one for each car, and they'll each go into detail on the car because there's just not going to be enough time to cover this in one video. So I'll put up links for that and we'll cover it there. With all the housekeeping out of the way now, let's get into the active aerodynamics. If we look at our main cars here, I've given them all a rank. So this is what I think of each of the cars. My favorite in the active aerodynamics is the one-to-one. -one. Then we've got the P1, LaFerrari, 918, and I'm not a fan of the active aerodynamics on my wire. And I'll just briefly go into that soon. But if we look at our overall figures, so our numbers, what we've got is I've taken the quoted downforces from each of these cars, and I've taken the quoted minimum coefficients of drag as well as the quoted weights. These are all from the manufacturers. But the thing is, is that I wanted to compare the downforce across them uniformly. So what I've done is I've calculated my own CLs or coefficients of lift using their quoted downforce figures because they quote them all at different speeds I've coded them across a common frontal area, so that way we can do a direct comparison to see how much downforce they make. And we can see that the 1 to 1 and the P1 are pretty much the same, and the LaFerrari and the 918 are quite a bit down, and Pagani doesn't even quote a figure for their downforce, so we'll get to why that is later. One of the things that you should really note here is that the weights for the cars are different, and this is actually an important consideration when it comes to aerodynamics, because 
your effectiveness of your downforce is directly proportional to how heavy the car is. If the car is heavy, it's going to be less effective. So you should really consider that when you're looking at the cars. And of course, the LaFerrari is incredibly light and that helps with the fact that it doesn't have as much downforce as these other guys. Looking into the specific aerodynamic devices on each car, we can see that they vary quite a bit in their implementations of active aerodynamics. So the one-to-one's wing is actually a non-retractable rear wing. It is only changeable in angle of attack. And while some people may consider this a disadvantage, I actually think that the way in which it's implemented is an advantage in terms of the overall car. No doubt it's a disadvantage in the pure aerodynamic sense, but overall I think it benefits the car. The McLaren, of course, has a much less conservative, fully retractable and deployable rear wing that's quite substantial in size. LaFerrari is really more of just a little rear lip spoiler kind of thing that extends and retracts, which is why it doesn't get amazing downforce figures. Um, and the 918's wing is really, really conservative. I've seen the 918 up very close in real life and it really didn't do it for me. And the Huayra has those weird little flap thingies and I'm going to go in depth into those on the Huayra video, so definitely go stay around for that. We've got a lot of active under tray going on here. Uh, the P1's active under tray is not 100% confirmed. It's really hard to find information on that. Like I've seen frontal flaps mentioned, but I haven't seen any diagrams. Whereas I have seen plenty of stuff on the LaFerrari and the 918's under trays and on the 1-1's as well. The Ferrari's implementation of its active under tray doesn't quite do it for me. I've got a press release video from Ferrari that I'll analyze in the Ferrari video and it shows the under tray in action and I'm really not a fan of the operation of that. And the 918 also has the active on a tray slot, and this seems to be a slightly better implementation than Ferrari's. And as far as I know on the Huayra, it doesn't have it. When I'm talking about active dynamic suspension here, I'm talking about suspension that as you're going around corners and around the track, you end up with the suspension varying to benefit aerodynamics. So of course, in the one-to-one, -one, the suspension is active. You can choose multiple settings. You can rake it back for high speed. You can do all these different things, but it will not change those from corner to corner. It's not acting as if it was an active downforce producing device. Um, in the P1, it's got, its active suspension will control its roll and everything correctly. And that, while it's a suspension benefit, it's also an aerodynamic benefit because it keeps the floor flat because it doesn't have anti-roll bars. I'm not sure how many of you are up on the McLaren suspension system, but it's really, really clever. It's a nice system and it's great for aero. Um, LaFerrari 918, as far as I could see, didn't have active suspension. The Huayra pumps up its front suspension under braking, I believe, to try and get its um, floor angle consistent. And then active cooling, not really my concern here. I'm not hugely fussed about that from an aerodynamics point of view, but I do know that the LaFerrari and the 918 have it. And that obviously helps reduce drag when you don't need those cooling vents and then opens them when you do. Okay, that's all from the top and introduction video. I suggest you now go to the links for the other videos and then have a look at the detailed analysis of each car. Thanks for watching and hopefully enjoy the other videos.